In the year 1857, America was in the midst of the horse and buggy era. Candles still lit most of the homes, and transportation was almost primitive. But the faith and determination of one man in New Haven, Connecticut, was about to change all this. The man was Edwin L. Drake, who had been summoned by the New Haven banker, J.M. Townsend, to discuss a business matter. Come in, Mr. Drake. Good morning, Mr. Townsend. You asked me to come. Yes, yes. Please sit down. Thank you. You're a busy man. I'll be brief. <clears throat> You're no longer with the railroad? No, sir. Uh, my health. Uh, but nothing serious? Fortunately, no. Then perhaps you'll be able to undertake an important mission for me. A mission, sir? A journey to look over a certain piece of property and report your findings. You see, Two years ago, I helped form the Pennsylvania Rock Oil Company. Rock Oil? Uh, what is Rock Oil, sir? I'll show you. No one knows yet just exactly what it is. Only time and experiment will tell. Uh, that oil came from a spring on the property that I'd like to have you examine for me. Since oil is lighter than water, it rises and floats on the surface from where we've been trying to gather it. Uh, perhaps if you saw the operation, you could tell us why we haven't been more successful. Uh, what, uh, what troubles you, Mr. Drake? Well, I'm still wondering what value this strong-smelling stuff could have. We're still not very sure. Uh, but uh, let me read you this. It's a report on it that Professor Silliman of Yale University submitted two years ago. April 1855. Listen. It appears there is ground for belief that your company has in its possession a raw material from which, by simple and not expensive process, they may manufacture many valuable products. My experiments prove that nearly the whole of the raw product may be manufactured without waste. Mr. Townsend, where is this property of yours? You mean that you'll undertake the survey? Yes, sir. Excellent. Splendid. <laughs> now, when you get there, look up Dr. Brewer. He's one of the owners of the local lumber mill. It's in northwest Pennsylvania. There is the Allegheny River, and there is Titusville. it is, floating on top of the water. Hmm. And tell me, Dr. Brewer, how did they collect the oil? Ah, well, now you've come to the real problem. Come here, I'll show you. Now, this is a system of troughs and skimmers we put in about, about four years ago. Now, the idea was to let the spring water into the troughs and then skim off the oil. And it seemed like a pretty good idea. But it didn't work? Oh, yes, it worked all right. But, and uh, how much oil did they produce? Well, that was it. Only about three to six gallons a day. And that was a lot of effort and expense for only that much production. Yes, I see. Mm. So, after a few months, the project was abandoned. And now, as you can see, this, these skimmers have rotted. That. Seems a great pity, doesn't it? Because I believe Townsend may be right about his possibilities. Oh, four years ago, back in 53, I took a bottle of it back to my old teachers at Dartmouth College, Professors Crosby and Hubbard. After conducting several experiments, they became so optimistic about its value as a commodity that they roused the interest of a chance visitor, Henry Bissell. Bissell became so enthusiastic about its commercial future that he carried a sample back to New York and showed it to his business partner, Jonathan G. Eveleth. They both saw great possibilities, and as a result, they formed the Pennsylvania Rock Oil Company to develop the area and market the product. And since the spring was on our land, my concern, Brewer Watson Company, was given shares in the venture, the same company in which your New Haven interests are involved. So after all that time and trouble, it's come to this. 
Isn't there a more satisfactory way of collecting the oil? No. And here's a man who'll tell you there never will be. Howdy, Doctor. You and the remains? Well, that's for Mr. Drake to decide. Oh, Mr. Drake, I'd like you to meet Mr. Anger. Howdy. How do you do, sir? He's the man who built these trenches, troughs, and skimmers. Well, it looks practical. Very well thought out, in fact. Oh, sure, sure. The only thing wrong with them is they didn't collect enough oil. But I still don't quite see why. I'll tell you why. Because that oil just takes its own sweet time about coming up. That's why. Yes, that's true. And when it does come up, it won't stand still long enough to be skimmed off. It's all over creation and, and downstream and lost before you can get at it. Yes, I can see that, but I still think that... I don't care what you think, mister. There's no way to increase that oil. I've tried every way there is, and most of it still gets away. So I'm telling you, there just ain't no way. I think it is possible. To increase the quantity of the oil and collect enough to make it commercially practical? Yes. It may take time, but a way can and will be found. You really believe that? I do. Good. I can now recommend we proceed with the reorganization of the company as the Seneca Royal Company. I'll also recommend we elect you president of the company and engage you as general agent to raise and dispose of the oil. Would a salary of, say, $1,000 a year be acceptable? Yes, sir, I, I think it would. Fine, fine. Now then, as soon as the reorganization is completed, you'll be sent back to Titusville to drill, bore, dig, mine, and search for petroleum. Is that clear? Quite clear, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> I'll be ready. Good. My name is Drake from New Haven. Oh, yes, sir. We've been expecting you. Glad to have you with us. You'll be in room number 12. Oh, thank you. Any mail for me? Mail? Oh, oh yes. Just uh, one letter, Colonel. My dear Drake, since your mission may need the cooperation of the local people, it will add to your prestige if, from now on, you will adopt the courtesy title of Colonel. I hope the work proceeds with the utmost dispatch. Cordially yours, James M. Townsend. in production now, aren't we, Colonel? About 10 gallons a day. He's lying, isn't he? No, it's true, but... Well, maybe not quite the fool it took you for. Well, thanks, Mr. Anger. Still not good enough. But it does prove you were right on one point. What's that? This whole method's wrong. If we want to increase production, we've got to get down closer to the source. All right, boys. Over there. We're going to try something else. I want you to get picks and shovels and dig. We're going to dig a hole and go down till we find that oil. You know what I think of you now? I think you're crazy. Crazy, that's what he is, and I told him so. Digging a hole in the ground for oil? Yes. Oh, no, nobody could be that foolish. You don't believe it? Well, you just come and see for yourself. You're doing it right now. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. Never 
find those folks, boys. Keep at it. How far down are we, Colonel? We're down about eight feet now. No sign of oil yet, though. There will be. Keep at it. <laughs> Guys, Colonel, how much further are you going? We're almost 15 feet now. Do we strike the oil or I know it isn't possible? Are you not willing to admit you're wrong? This proves nothing, except that I must find another method. We ought to run you out of town. Regardless, as long as I am here, if there's any way of making this project work, I'll find it. My dear Mr. Townsend, I shall need $1,000 at once. Sorry, Colonel. No mail for you. Nothing, sir. Sorry. Mr. Drake? No, I beg your pardon, Colonel Drake. We will gladly advance you $500 against your personal note. Now, if you would just sign there, sir. Thank you. So you're going to drill, huh? Yes. But to do that, I need power. And I thought perhaps you might permit me to use your mill's water wheel for it. Now, gum, Colonel, you can't expect me to interrupt the operation of my sawmill. No. No, I suppose not. Why don't you ride over to Tarentum? Talk to some of those salt well drillers over there. Do you think they might advise me? Well, why not? Drilling's drilling, whether it's a salt well or, or, or for oil. Thank you, Dr. Brewer. This is fun. Well, here in Tarentum, it's salt drilling we do. I've talked to a number of drillers hereabouts, but none of them seems willing to come. <laughs> I don't know as I blame them. Well, if it's a question of pay, I... Hey, I could deal with some of that kind of money myself. You mean you'd come? I might. Look, you said you wanted to see an engine. Go look at that one in there. We'll talk about hiring me later. You go to Titusville to drill for you. Wall and chain, she wouldn't let you. He don't know that, does he? And if I can get a few dollars in advance, I'm gonna see what he's up to. Who's the maker? Right on that brass plate there, name and address both. When do you figure I could get delivery if I ordered right away? Oh, I'd say you should have it not later than 1st of September. Good. I'll write as soon as I get back to Titusville. 
Oh, what about you now? Sure, you order that in, Jine. And I'll be in Titusville same day it gets there. My name's, uh, Brown. Say him, Brown. Fine, Mr. Brown. Well, I'd better be getting back now. Uh, just a second. It's kind of customary around these parts to seal a bargain, mister. Seal? Oh, I see. Excuse me. Of course. Come on, boys, let's get moving. You're in a hurry, aren't you, Colonel? I got an engine and a driller arriving here September 1st. I just want to be ready for them, that's all. Ground's frozen too hard to drill. What about your driller? Wasn't he supposed to be here? He was, the 1st of September, but he didn't show up then either. So, I've got to go back to Tarentum and hire another. Yeah, I guess that'll do for a while. Thanks, Uncle Billy. Are you Mr. Smith? Ah, that's me. Though most folks just call me Uncle Billy. <laughs> Say, you're Colonel Drake from Titusville. That's right. And I need some help. I wouldn't doubt it. Sit down. Thank you. You see, I've been coming the 60 miles over to Tarantum. Month after month, and driller after driller has promised to help him, and there isn't one of them has kept his word. Uh, that right? I'd just about given up when someone told me about you. I don't know what I can say to persuade you. Maybe you don't have to, Colonel. Maybe when a man believes in himself as strong as you do, it's uh, kind of catching. Uh, you want me to work for you, I take it. Indeed I do. They say that you're a skilled drill and tool maker and an expert driller. Well, all them talents is liable to cost you money. Would uh, two dollars and fifty cents a day be too much? You mean you'll come? Just tell me what day you want me to report in Titusville. Thank you, Uncle Billy. Dig down the bedrock before we start drilling. Yeah, but we tried that. The underground water made the whole cave. Well, we'll dig as far as we can, then we'll use the drill. Pop! What is it, boy? Can we go fishing now? You promised. Soon as we get this rig underway. Now, go along now, son, back with the sister. Oh, Pop! Get your gang together, Colonel, and start digging. Poking your finger in the bowl of water. Pull it out and where's the hole? Yes, I know. But there must be some way. Take up on the slack.
What incarnation is this? The end of our trouble, I hope. Come on, help us unload, and I'll explain later. It's down the bedrock, Colonel. Hold it. Fine. Now we'll put the drill to work. Well, let her go. Nothing serious. The drill slipped into a crevice in the rock, that's all. Well, that's all for today, boys. Uh, tomorrow's Sunday anyway. And I promise my boy I'd take him fishing in the morning. I'll sharpen the bit first thing Monday. Uncle Billy. Yeah, Colonel? I had a letter from Mr. Townsend this morning. Is that so? What what did he say? Therefore, I direct you to cease drilling, abandon the venture, and return to New Haven. Hmm. Colonel, if I know you by now. Yes, Uncle Billy. I think you do. Yeah. yeah. You're wondering how good little boys are biting today. Oh, Pop, quit teasing. <laughs> come on, Pop, come on, let's go. Yeah? Come on, Pop, run. Hold on a second, son. Take a look down there, son. You see anything? No. Gosh, time we get to the fish along. Now, wait, 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 wait. to town. Find Colonel Drake and tell him we struck oil. Go on, run, run. Pop, Pop, here he is. We done it, Colonel. We struck it. 
Let them laugh at you now. Oil, oil, Colonel. Hundreds of gallons of it. You've won. It's true. Oil. A deep pool of it. Still, I knew. I knew it could be done. Drake had succeeded. Overnight, he became famous. Now people realize the importance of his accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. They say he's pumping 200 gallons every 24 hours. 200 gallons? I hear he's getting 400 gallons every day. Say, suppose you got stuff on my land. How would I find out? Me too. Let's go ask him. Back to their farms they went to drill for oil. One man's initiative and will could succeed, so could another's. And who under these vast and free American skies was to stop or hinder them? Sometimes their tools were crude, but their determination was boundless. Wells sprang up throughout the valley. The word of Drake's success spread far. And from distant places, men came to Titusville to lease or buy land and to drill for oil. Almost overnight, a new industry was born, the oil industry created by American ingenuity, freedom, independence. Men vied with one another to lease land and produce more oil. Drake's single well was the beginning of the oil industry, and today thousands of wells are drilled each year by hundreds of competing oil companies to supply the gasoline, oil, and other products required for our daily use. America's high standard of living is made possible by the machine age, powered by petroleum, now we have mastery over land, sea, and air. Today, over a quarter of a million busy places compete for our gasoline and oil business. And 95% of all service stations are owned or operated by independent businessmen. And behind all of them stands the memory of another independent man. For when Edwin L. Drake started to drill for oil, they called him that crazy Drake. They laughed at him, told him to forget about it and go home. But Drake persevered. He made use of a great American right, the freedom to explore, invent, and discover. America is deeply indebted to Drake, the man of vision, and to all men like him. May our country's future be enriched by those who follow in his footsteps.